Thank you for joining me for this episode of MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. I'm Dan Adams. Today we're talking about linear friction welding. Linear friction welding is very similar to rotary friction welding, specifically direct drive friction welding. And like direct drive, it's a constant energy input process. The only difference between the rotary friction welding and linear friction welding is the type of relative motion that we're using. In this case, we're oscillating the moving piece on a linear path. There are two components of the oscillation that drive this energy input. There is a frequency, the number of times that we oscillate per second, and the amplitude, which is the distance that we're going to travel as we're oscillating. So as we accelerate one part, we're going to start to ramp up this frequency and the amplitude, represented by the red line. So as our amplitude starts to increase, uh, we are holding our frequency and we want to get to a steady state point. We can bring on our forge force at the time that we start the relative motion, or we can bring it on at the point at which we achieve the steady state motion. Now we're going to hold this oscillation for a specific amount of weld upset, and we're going to hold this forge force while we're doing that. The forge force controls how the energy is converted, or it controls the power input of the weld. We're going to hold that power input as we start to upset material, represented by the blue line, and as soon as we get to a certain amount of upset based on the application, we're going to ramp the frequency and amplitude down to a final position, maintain our forge force, and we'll have the resultant amount of upset. Now if we wanted to, we could decrease the amount of forge force that we were applying, which would change the rate of power input into the weld. It would flatten out the upset curve because we'd be converting this energy at a slower rate. And in order to hit the target amount of upset, we'd have to oscillate for a longer period of time. Conversely, we could increase the amount of forge force that we apply. This would increase the power input and shorten the weld time, and it would increase the slope of the upset, so we would hit that target upset sooner, shortening the cycle time. Why would we want to do this? Well, if you have a very delicate part that may not be able to handle the forces associated with the friction uh, at these early stages, we could come in with a low forge force we could convert our, our energy more slowly, extend the weld time a little bit, and make a successful weld. If the part is robust, then we can bring on our full forge force very quickly, we can shorten the cycle time of the weld, uh, and we can get the weld done very quickly. MTI can design a machine that can do either of these power input rates, and it's based on your application. So come see us and we can design a, a machine that will fit your application for a successful linear friction weld. Thank you for joining us for this episode of MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. For more information on this topic or other friction welding solutions, please visit our website at mtiwelding.com.